So welcome to the second talk. Uh, it's about a new feature um, called Sandbox Environments. And it's a feature me and my team built. And yeah, I'm going, uh, going to give you a sneak peek. Um, I think hey, hey. Um, I want to also start this uh, presentation with a quote, which actually from Stefan Yudis, who's sitting here, gave at the last presentation, which says, copying a slide here, nobody gets it right the first time. But I think it's actually not only about the first time. What? Because there's another quote from one of our partners that says the real problem starts once some content is live and actually running on Contentful. Because I mean, the first time you can actually try an error, you can nuke a data structure, you can nuke your content, nothing is a big problem. But as soon as you're live, it's actually pretty hard when you make a mistake and you screw up your production website. So what do we have currently to work around this? I mean, we have the import export tool where you can basically dump your entire data locally. You can import it back into the, another space. It's kind of working, but it's obviously it's a client side tool, so it's slow. And it also requires you to sync with your colleagues who is actually doing an import right now, who's doing an export. Do we have to sync some other data? Wouldn't it be nice if there's some other solution? The other problem is like syncing content across spaces is hard. So I mean, me and Christoph working on one of one of the spaces. Somebody's trying to do an import. Somebody's trying to do an export. We have to somehow get a diff of spaces. Everything is somehow complicated. So what if I could copy all my content with a single click? And that's a feature I'm going to present you right now. I have to figure this out. So yeah, the thing is about environments. And yeah, you might hear and start seeing soon a lot of stuff about environments because we think that's drastically changing how you work with Contentful because you don't have to fear any longer to screw up your production website. Um, so what is environments? What is he talking about? Um, to quickly recap, what is the, the current domain model of Contentful looks like? We have the organization where you manage your subscription, your billing data, you have some users attached which have their own tokens, there are auth applications. And in your organization, you have various spaces. And the spaces are actually like the projects holding your content. And they're defined by content models, some content, some media, API keys, web hooks. So it's a kind of a mix which we think assembles your project. So, how do your environments fit into this picture? And the environments are actually living under a space and they only encapsulate your content. So they encapsulate your content structure, your content, your media, your locales, your UI extensions. So how can I create an environment? And I mean, he's talking about a change in the domain model. Do I have to migrate all my websites? Obviously it's not because that would be pretty bad for feature adoption. Because everybody has already a master environment. So actually Christoph, the one from the first talk, did a lot of amazing work to migrate everybody to create a master environment for them and migrate their actual content. So you're basically using environments already. You just didn't know. And you can simply create a new environment by a single HTTP call. Just go to the uh, environment's cut endpoint and you create a new environment called staging instance. So what is an environment? An environment will always be a one-to-one -one copy of your master environment. So this means, I think for import export, a lot of people had problems about when I import the content and all the, all the content is owned by me, everything was created by me, all the metadata is changing. In this case, everything will be the same. The only difference is that now the content on the staging environment has this environment ID, uh, sys environment staging, while the content on the master environment has sys environment master. So it may be really a one-to-one -one copy of everything which is in your master. And there it also doesn't depend how much content do you actually have. If you're like a small blog with like 50 posts, it will be a one-to-one -one copy. If you have 200,000 entries, it will be a one-to-one -one copy. And it's like a single HTTP. And the really important thing about this here is once you create an environment, they're basically completely isolated. 
So you can start changing content, you can start changing structure, you won't affect your master environment, <coughs> which is truly important because uh, as I said in the beginning, nobody does it right the first time, so you can actually start writing tests against this, you can start changing the structure without actually breaking the master, and you can preview how it would look like in production. So how can I access the content? And there's going to be a change in how we are accessing content, content within environments. And that's the current way, we call it the implicit way. So you can use the old URL, which is spaces, ID, entries, and this will always refer to content which lives in master, to not break your existing applications. But you can also start specifying either an explicit master or an explicit staging in this case. So you talk, you start talking about talking towards master content or content with, with lives in staging. And yeah, all our, or most of our SDKs are already updated. There are new beta versions. They can, together with your space ID, also define an environment. So nothing should pretty much change for you, except you might need to define staging if you want to see how everything looks like in a second. Uh, the other change is basically now to really refer in content and contentful. You, cannot, you can no longer just use the name, the type, and the entry itself. You also always have to define the environment. Because, yeah, if you talk to your colleagues, have you checked out this entry with the ID Alice? They obviously don't find it because we were talking about the staging. So what can I really do with it? And I think we have several use cases we wanted to solve. And the first use cases are actually looking at CI because we hear from a lot of developers, I mean, you want to write tests against Contentful, but it's pretty hard because you either have to import some subset of data, you have to automate created space, you have to automate space creation, but yeah, everything is kind of cumbersome. So the first use case is actually the, the kind of common CI flow where you have a master, it has some very known state for every Travis CI run or whatever CI you're using. You just branch out a new environment, let's call it CI1, CI2. You run your test, you modify it, and the end you tear it down. So you can always assume like a very known state in your tests. Or you can use a more Git-like flow. That's one that I will also demo later today where you have your master environment, you branch off to develop a feature, you change the content model, and in the end, you bring back those changes into the master environment. Or I mean, with S with Git, people go more crazy, so you start actually having a shared staging environment, a staged QA environment, a feature, and you kind of merge back, back and forth between those environments. So why, now you might asking, why do we have a new entity and not just spaces? I mean, I talked a bit about how managing content across spaces is hard. So what we thought about when we created this new entity is not, we don't want to make your life harder by learning a new domain model, but we think there's some things which are not content related, which should definitely be shared across environments. And that's the users. I mean, you don't want to assign every to every environment you create, especially the ones you create automatically, you don't want to assign new memberships. You don't want to assign roles. So they should be shared across all environments and maybe specifically targeted to certain environments. And yeah, that's why we thought we create this new entity, which really only encapsulates all your content and nothing else, because that's the only thing you actually want to iterate on, while the rest is basically metadata for your project. Yeah, when, when, it, when will it be ready? Um, it's already running for some customers. You can sign up on, on, uh, for the beta. You can just ask me in the community Slack or send me an email. I will also sharing the slides so you don't have to make a picture right now. Um, yeah, and let's praise the demo gods. There will be a demo now of the environments. So, okay, let's start. Um, this is just a demo space. The example space, I think when you have used content, you might have seen it. It has a couple of content types. 
Um, I just created this already before the middle. <coughs> yeah, I, I mean, some of you have seen it. It's kind of a, you have a course content type, you have some categories, you have layouts, you can browse the content. Let's go to some content piece. This happens when you preload everything. Load it again. Yeah, you can see basically the example of our uh, amazing ecosystem the team has created. We can browse the different courses. So it's, it's basically like a course management app. And I think for today's exercise, what we actually want to do, we want to change the structure of this course management app to also include a location field. So what we, we start doing, as you should, everybody should do now, is before we actually want to make a change, we create a new environment. Call it add location. You see the environment is being created. And it's ready. So before starting, we want to, um, I think some of you might have heard already about the migration CI. That's the second um, part of this thing we, we see as the belongs to the environment workflow. So after you created an environment, the, the main uh, way how to start developing your changes is called something called a, uh, it's using something called the migration CLI. I know some people are familiar with Rails, I know, and some other frameworks also provide this way. It's you basically start writing codified migrations. In this case, we create another migration which creates a content type, which creates a field. It's a symbol type. I mean, you can do whatever changes you prefer, but we think that's the best way to actually migrate changes currently from one environment to the other because there's no build and way yet. But yeah, that's what we see. We will start creating a migration to add, to use this course content type. Let me go back to this. So we want to edit the content type of course. We want to add this location field. Um, it should have the name location. It should be a symbol and it should also be required from now. So we can use the migration CI. And we want to run it against our space. We want to run it against our environment. And we want to execute the migration. So it also shows now what, uh, what it's planning to do. It wants to update the content type. It wants to create a new field location. And it wants to publish the changes. So let me, let me hit enter. And let's go back to the browser. And when I navigate to the content type and to the course field, you will see hmm, actually nothing changed. And that's kind of the intention of this exercise because I'm still, you might have noticed a small sign up there in the left corner. I'm still in my master environment. And actually nothing should have changed because people should have actually continued using this master environment without me breaking their workflows or the production website. But if I go now here to this space navigation, I can actually switch to this new uh, environment, go into the course content type, and see the field location has been added. So I can actually start updating all the courses. I can test whether all my apps are still working. Let's find the course here. Here's one help content form. Let's contact it at the meetup and we publish the changes. 
I can verify them right now. Not all the places have been updated yet uh, to support environments. As I said, it's kind of a beta. Um, but yeah, so you can basically start testing, testing with your app, start testing with your code, whether things actually work. And as soon as you conducted them to actually work, you can apply the same migration against your master environment. And you see, it wants to add the same field. And if I go to the master environment, you will see there's also a location field. And so, as I said, that's really about the, um, the workflow we envision that you use this migration CLI to really start iteratively developing your migrations. I mean, nobody gets it right the first time, so it's sometimes really hard, especially if you have much more complicated uh, migrations to transform your content types, but also transform your content. But so you basically use an environment to iterate on this. And once you have defined this migration, you will check on this, this file into source control. You get a PR review from some of your coworkers. You merge this. And then you might have even a CI process to automatically apply this migration against your master environment. And yes, that's it. So, thank you. Are there any questions? Is this going to be available for everyone or just for better? Um, it will be also soon be available for everyone. We are still working on the last kings. As you've seen there, you cannot directly jump into an environment right now. There are some other limitations, but yeah, overall it's, it's planned to be available for everyone. But um, as, as I said, if you want to try it out right now, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't break your space as you've seen. You can just hit me on Slack and I get you signed up. Okay. Thank you.